from the News Channel 5 Network and Out and About newspaper. This is Out and About Today. Good evening and welcome to Out and About Today. I'm Pam Wheeler. On tonight's show, Brent will sit down with psychotherapist Barbara Sanders and discuss dealing with the loss of a loved one to suicide. Later in the Entertainment Outlook, Chuck will preview the recently announced upcoming season at TPAC. But first, we open tonight's show with our Buzz About Roundtable discussion, and we're going to start the conversation with the SCOTUS decision on marriage equality. I'm joined by my co-hosts, Brent Meredith and Chuck Long, and our guest panelist tonight is Myle Pack. Hey, Myle. Hello. Welcome. Thanks, thanks hey, for coming yeah, thank in. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, we're gonna, we invited you here tonight because we're going to talk about the loss of Kevin Watts in our community far too soon. You were a good friend. We're going to get to that. Okay. Uh, but first, I, I do want to make the transition and talk about the SCOTUS decision because it is next month. Yeah. Possibly, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, we have attorneys here that just made oral arguments in front of the Supreme Court. This is really happening. I want to show a clip of what the plan was to argue. We don't have that actual oral argument footage, but here was our strategy. Let's take a look and listen. Well, I mean, we're arguing. Sorry. Sorry. Well, couple of folks are I mean, it's, it's actually pretty simple. We're, we're arguing that the 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution requires states to recognize marriages that are valid in other states. Um, and that we not be a country that has sort of a checkerboard pattern of some states allowing marriage and some not. Um, we're arguing that it's a fundamental right that should not be denied to any U.S. citizen, and we're arguing that the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment requires that all people be treated equally. Um, and also that people be allowed to travel throughout the country um, without losing marriages, marriage status that they have validly contracted in another state. So. And I just want to add that um, it's, it's a basic concept of federalism in our American system of government that what happens in one state is respected in another state. If you get married in one state, traditionally throughout the history of this country, your marriage is recognized in all states. And to do it any other way um, has created chaos and will create more chaos. So it's our position that um, the Constitution requires equality. I, I didn't introduce them. That was, of course, Abby Rubenfeld and Bill Harbison, the attorneys that are making those arguments. Uh, so, how, are we nervous with this next month? I would say, I feel right now waiting to exhale mm -hmm. because yeah. I feel like it's going to go our way, mm -hmm. but until we get that final ruling. Because we've had that feeling before. Yes, we Chuck. have. Yeah, you yeah. know, we've been like, oh, this is going to go this way. Ago, yeah. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And Abby thought, you know, even a couple of years ago, she's like, it's coming, it's coming, right. which I love, yeah. And she, I think at that time, predicted two years, and I think this yeah. will be two years, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, she's always right. <laughs> Maya, what do, you, what do you think? I'm very excited, and I do hope this does happen. It's a long time coming and waiting for all of us as LGBT members. Absolutely. And our, do, I know I have a couple friends who have just recently got a wedding invitation mm -hmm. to in September. Do you have friends making plans, banking on? I mean, regardless of the ruling, we can get married. Yeah, we get yeah, married. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and I do actually, and and several like myself included though wanted it to be legal in Tennessee right. rather than marry outside, which I think that's great if yeah. you did. But we wanted to wait until it was here. So most of my, the ones that I know that want to get married want to do the same thing. But you know, if something goes awry here. I think they still will go through with it. But yeah, they definitely want to get married in their home state for family to travel in, and they don't want to have to go somewhere else to do that. That's not fair. Yeah, that was my story too. It still yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, my own, what I, as a uh, as a wedding photographer, I even have clients that are waiting oh, to really? yeah they're yeah because I've got some they're they're on the state line of Alabama and, and Tennessee and they live in Tennessee and they are waiting to do a marriage once Tennessee passes this so there are plenty of people that are kind of holding their breath and waiting <laughs> for this to occur. Interesting. And I hate to say it because you said waiting to exhale. We're all positive. If we get a blow, which we haven't had a blow, well here, right here in the state we did, mm -hmm. a minor one, it wasn't an impact of, if it doesn't go our way, we just rally again and get Abby to rally us up again? I think we have to. We um, have no choice. You know, that's what yeah. we've been doing all this time. And yeah. so it's kind of like, if we have to keep going, we just need to do do it. But history's on our side, and right. it, it will yes. happen. Yes. But oh my gosh, I hope well, this and, is and if now. It, it, again, if it's not necessarily to our liking, there's going to be a whole host of other states and other people that are going to be behind it as well, not just those of us who have never had it. I mean, that's going to... And it's amazing. I mean, still, we're, there are only 13 states where this is not legal yeah. now. Right. It yeah. is just ludicrous. Yeah. I can't, yeah. So, you know, all of that. It will, across the board, be accepted. And 
it will happen. Yeah. Well, and I'm, I'm very curious too. I know that they talked about the 14th Amendment and equal protection and travel and whatnot, but there's, there are a host of other issues that happen on a federal level as a result of this. I mean, you've got people re registering for t or filing their taxes as <laughs> joined. And, so, I mean, there's a whole host of other issues, I think, that are outside of even just the things that they're arguing that need to be resolved. Yeah. Right. Well, I want to move on uh, to a, a really somber topic, but one I think we all want to talk about on the show. Uh, we were shocked and sad to learn of Kevin Watt's death by suicide last month. We've got a picture up of Kevin and one of his great friends, Stanley Green. Uh, I knew Kevin. He worked uh, with me and many other people on HRC functions over the years. That smile, you know, I, I remember it well. And Mayo, you, you've been invited here today to share some stories and give a tribute to Kevin. Uh, Kevin was... A great guy. I miss I, I miss him dearly, and I already do. Friday nights were our nights to we would hang out and do things. And I remember years ago when I uh, when I first would come over to his house, I, I'd have my dogs in the car with me. He said, "Where are the dogs in the car?" It's like, "Well, I didn't know I didn't want to intrude." He's like, "No, bring them on in." He was just so open and, and warm. Kevin and I we took this um, big trip to uh, Cedar Point Park to the. Um, in Sandusky, Ohio, and at one point in our vacation, our little road trip, we got lost, and we were off the blue dot. We were looking at our tablets on our phones, we got lost, but um, he turned around and said, make it an adventure. We'll make it fun. Don't worry about it, and that was Kevin. He just, everything would always turn out just right. Positive, happy, that, that's totally my memory. We talked before we started airing about, you know, when somebody uh, dies through suicide, you have a ton of questions about him and what's happened. But then after that layer, you start asking questions too, and, and you start, some issues come up, and you brought up a great one about leaving your wishes behind, having a living will, having a will describing what you want to do with your animals. Correct. It's, um, it's been very eye-opening to, to realize that I, in particular, I have, nothing, I, have, I have nothing written down. No will, living will. My family wouldn't know what to do because I haven't thought about it. I think a lot of people just in general when they're especially they're young or they don't have a family it's just not something you think about and now it's been kind of my thing to say is like hey look guys you need to have something laid out. Right mm -hmm. and I, I hate this because we're almost out of time already. Brent in your next segment you're going to talk about uh, with Barbara Sanders mm -hmm trying to deal with a loss. Yeah, so I mean, I wanted to focus on with her sort of what happens for those that are still living after the fact and sort of, you know, the, the grieving process that you go through, the healing process, but also sort of, you know, signs and warning signs, which a lot of which we already know, but there's just some interesting dynamics. She did an op-ed piece for Out About Nashville um, mm -hmm. in April, and there was just some interesting topics in there, too. I wanted to expand on those. Well, so that's up next. You'll be yeah. here with Barbara Sanders. Thank you, Mayel. Oh, thank we you for having me. We remember Kevin Watts. Thank you. Up next, Brent is here with psychotherapist Barbara Sanders. Stay with us.